Yo, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna show you the optimal build for an engineer, and it's the Grenadier engineer. Now, what's a Grenadier? Very simple. It was the name for elite soldiers in the 18th and 19th century, because at that time, grenades were very complicated, hard to use, and very expensive. So only very few, only very great selected soldiers were trained to use them. Now, for not only for power, but also for role playing reasons. I put every first soldier of my squads as an engineer. Now, A, in real life, a sniper or a random assaulter or a random machine gunner would not lead a squad. Obviously, it would be the most precious, most highly educated soldier, and these would be inevitably the engineers. Now, this is the role-playing reason. The game power reason is even stronger. Now, when you start a game, the absolutely best thing you can do is build a ready point. Yeah, always build a ready point. If you want to become a really good player, do it. Now, 99% of all players don't do it. That's why 99% of all players suck. Yeah, they don't want to hear it, but that's the truth. They fail because they don't support the team by building ready points. And they don't really adapt their way of playing to whatever the situation needs. And lit also in 99% of all cases, the best thing you can do when you spawn instantly build a ready point. Now... If your first soldier is an engineer, you don't have to switch around. That is extremely comfortable. Also, it leads to very nice automatic gameplay where you don't have to think. Where the best thing to do is automatically that what the game starts you with. Also, for the same reason, the last soldier in your squad should always be the radio man if you have one. As you can see, because this is the soldier that needs to survive for the longest. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to fight with them. I always make them the last soldier. All right, now, what is, how is he equipped? Very simple. Since you're starting with the engineer, you will engage your enemies very likely at, at long range. Now, for this reason, you want a rifle that kills at long range. Bolt actions are perfect for that, especially after the bolt action buff. Now, if you look at alternatives, for example, semi-autos, guess what? Vitality soldiers won't die with them. Also, they are less precise than bolt action rifles. Yeah, so... Even if this weapon overall is better, I still prefer this. Yeah? Not only for fun reasons, not only for aiming, training reasons, but also for simply for the fact that if I start, if I spawn with this engineer, when I rush towards the objective, depending on the map, enemies will be able to kill me. Now, guess what? I can shoot back. Or I will be able to spot enemies. Once again, I can shoot back and kill them and get safely on the objective. Now, he also, if you have a good one, if you have a spare one, I wouldn't actively waste silver for that, but if you have them, give them good pistols, because this is obviously great for long range. If you're very good and fast at aiming, they're also good at short range, but this is just a welcome addition. Also, only five rounds is ridiculously low, so instead of having to reload for three seconds, you can just switch over to the pistol and keep on shooting. Yeah, extremely good on short range encounters. Now, since you're an engineer, it's also synergistic that you that you don't use ammo pouches because you can A build ammo boxes and B you have the pistol. Now this frees up this slot and you can give him large grenade pouches. Now what makes them so good? A you can call him a grenadier since now he has grenades and B you can give them one explosion pack, which I recommend always, so you can blow up tanks, and then two of whatever you want. Now, whatever you want, I'm going to explain in the game footage at the end of the video. Now, additionally to these grenades, give them always an anti-personal mine. I would only uh, buy them, since they are fucking expensive, on campaigns that you like to play, that you always want to play. Yeah? For example, in campaigns I don't take serious, I don't have them. By the way, I also maxed Soviets in Moscow, but since I play them rarely, I much rather prefer, well, giving this side the, the mines instead of the other side. Now, obviously, you also want to give them a med pack, and if you if you have some spare bronze, give one or two of your squads flasks, because there are some situations where you absolutely need to run large distances, and having flasks is extremely good. You could also survive 
some gray zone encounters with the flasks that you otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. So especially in Moscow and Tunisia, where you have very often situations where you need to run large distances, these flasks can become very helpful. You don't need to have them on every engineer in your army because you can, since you can plan ahead and see, all right, after this objective, I will need a flask. So I'm just going to save this particular squad and spawn later when I actually need the flask and not earlier. All right, now this is this is the equipment. For the perks, as usual, your engineers should have the 14 green perk, 100%. Also, always give them vitality, so they survive, because you need survival, higher survivability. And for the same reason, the 10 costed yellow perk. Now, if you have questions towards perks, look at my perk explanation video. Every single perk is perfectly explained. Also, how to build soldiers with them. And the last two perks, just do whatever you want. I personally prefer the weapon changing speed, since it also applies to the hammer. And this perk, the two yellow perk. Now this perk basically makes your bots shoot faster and more precisely. This is extremely good, because if every of your soldiers has this perk, guess what? <laughs> guess what? You can only control one of them at a time. And the other five will be just much better at fighting for themselves if they have this perk. So this is just a very comfortable, very welcome perk. All right, this is the explanation for the perks and for the weapons and how to use them. You're gonna see now. All right, now why exactly do we use the large grenade pouches? Now, very simple. You always have one TNT at hand to blow up enemy tanks. Now, the other two slots are usable for whatever you like to do. Now, you can give them small grenades for example, so you can, if you attack, if you rush towards an objective, so you can cover or obstruct some objective or the, the, the path you want to take and just run safely towards the objective. You can also set a, give them uh, explosion grenades or impact grenades if you want to clear out objectives. Or you can do what I like to do, give them molotovs for a couple of different tricks. Yeah? Also what you can do. Since you have at least three infantry squads in your army, you can set up every single squad with a different grenade configuration. This way you will be absolutely perfectly prepared for any type of situation. Yeah? This, would be the, this would be basically the optimum. Now what I like to do is, I give everyone two TNT and one Molotov. Sometimes, sometimes one TNT, two Molotovs. Now why Molotovs? Very simple. If you know objectives very well, for example like here, I played this map, I don't know, 30 times in my life. I know this objective very, very well, and I know at which angle to throw the grenade. In case you don't know, very simple. Attack the objective, and 10 seconds, seconds later you can you will, you, you will be able to, to figure out where to throw your Molotov. Now, as you can see, in the right top corner, three Molotov kills. Now, Molotov kills are quite hard to do, but if you know enemies are crowded in a position if you know they're possibly already damaged by something, it's quite easy yeah, to burn them down. Also, when they're burning, they're slowed down. They won't move that fast, and any TNT that you throw, especially at the same spot, will kill them. Now, obviously, if you don't move in between throwing grenades, you don't have to aim again, and they will all land in the same position. Now, this is, the, this is basically the basic grenadiering. You have lots of grenades, and you just bomb your, you bombard your enemies with them. And if you especially hide, and they don't see them coming, and if you cook them nicely, enemies will have a very hard time surviving it. Yeah. Now, this turns your soldier, your engineer, into a one-man army. Because as I see, this, this is an Axis Moscow engineer. This is basically the weakest you can get. If you're up against SVT, uh, if you're up against uh, PPSH uh, enemies, you are really weak, so you absolutely need the additional firepower. And these grenades give you exactly the firepower that you need. Now, what we're also doing here is we set up some sandbags. So, in case they throw grenades back at us and say, no, oh, all right, from this direction the stuff is coming, we just throw back some of our grenades, well, you will be safe. Yeah. Also, since you have these sandbags here established, you can just come safely towards the objective and you won't get shot. Also, you won't get shot by snipers that are, uh, that are very good at using angles to hide themselves, but actually give you a nice headshot. 
All right, for the end, let's see another big important advantage of having the grenade pouches on your grenadier engineers. Now, very simple. When you use your engineers very often, you will all very often find yourselves in situations where you're gonna die. For example, here I'm surrounded by around seven Soviets that spawn every 10 seconds. So you, you will inevitably die. Now, what do you want to do when you die? Obviously, take revenge and still perform. Yeah? Now, how do you do this? Very simple. A, you get your 10 costed yellow perk, so you get downed instead of dying. And when you get downed, you do the following. You drop some grenades. Now, this is the reason why you should have a Molotov as your third grenade, because your third grenade is dropped first when you're downed. Yeah, crazy how nature do that. It's not the one, the first in your in your order of grenades in your inventory screen, but it's the, the third one that gets dropped first. Now, once you're downed or when you're about to die, you just simply click on the drop grenade buttons very quickly and you release all of the grenades. Now, the first will be the Molotov. This one obviously flames up everything around you, meaning it becomes very hard for your enemies to see and they will be very slow. And the last thing they will think about is throwing back grenades. I've never saw enemies throw back grenades at me while they were burning. Never. So you will always have enough time to drop, as you see, one Molotov dropped and yeah, <clears throat> this soldier will drop all the grenades. Now you just drop all of your grenades and they will all also explode. And what's even better, these were, as you saw, I tried to, I knew this is the place where the enemies will spawn and either naturally or with a rally point. Now, this is the Visokovo village attacker's side of the trench. And they they capture the first objective and now it's up to the second objective. Now, here I try to barb this whole situation up so they spawn right in the barbed wire and just completely get annoyed and completely lose. M many of them will die and many others will just have only half of their lives left. Yeah. So this was the plan, but they well started spawning naturally, so I had to react quickly. Now guess what? If they spawn naturally, they spawn with a shield as you can see. Yeah. But you can still just flame them. And once the shield wears off, they will start actually dying. Yeah, they will actually start dying, and this is how you can even kill enemies who have a shield. Yeah, just just put Molotovs on them. And yeah, now this is the perfect setup for an engineer because, well, engineers, only engineers will be in this situation where you wait for enemies to spawn, yeah, or where you search for enemy ready points because then, as you could saw, as you saw here, you can drop anti-personal anti mines on the enemy ready points and whenever a group spawns, they will all explode and die and the rally point will be gone, yeah. Alternatively, you can just barb up the enemy rally point as I already showed in one whole game and one how to engineer video which is also amazing because then the ready point will actually stay up and basically every soldier will very likely like every of the 10 players in the enemy team will likely spawn once there yeah very likely not the second time but once so you get basically you can get from one such single rally point Fifth, around 50 engineer points because you will around 50 times <laughs> contact your enemies yeah now this is just purely amazing and it has an extremely strong effect on the game because you are complete like it's it's much stronger than just ca graze on camping with a tank and killing 50 soldiers because not only are you killing enemies you're also slowing them down which is e which is even better than killing because the ready point is still up and a bad ready point is much worse than having no ready point at all. And barbing up enemy ready points is the strongest thing you can do. And once again, if it doesn't work out for some reasons, if your engineer has grenades, has large grenade pouches, then you can do this strategy as you can see here and get an extremely peak performance. It's extremely good peak performance. Now, for fun reasons, as the video ends, do the following. Look at the right side of the screen, not the center, the right side of the screen and count the kills that this squad does. Now, I controlled over the course of this video two different engineers and they only lived for a couple seconds each. Now, count how many kills these two engineers get and uh, the bots that I'm not controlling in the meantime while we are up against around 30 Soviet soldiers 
of which most of them have shields, so they're basically unkillable, yeah? Count the number of kills and you will be very surprised. And, as usual, be a good soldier and be a good grenadier engineer and aim for the like and subscribe buttons and hit them too. And see you next time. Goodbye.